You're listening to Power Athlete Radio, a podcast dedicated to empowering your performance every damn day. Join former NFL pro and power athlete founder John Wellborn as he dissects the greatest minds in strength, conditioning, and more. So whether your goal is to be the hammer, destroy mediocrity, or simply move the dirt, you've come to the right place. Now with the warm-up done, let the gains begin. Hey, Power the Nation. I want you to tune in for a powerful podcast with Mr. Arash Safani. We take Arash's journey in terms of weight loss. And when I first met Arash, he was pretty heavy, 300 plus pounds down from 355 pounds at his heaviest. And we go into not only the journey and his moment of self-discovery when he stepped on the scale and saw how heavy he was and realized that what he was doing as an athlete in the power lifting wasn't necessarily translating to what he thought it was in health and how he was viewing himself. And then the journey that he went on in terms of losing weight and where he sits today and really his progression in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and working with the team and more importantly, just finding a tribe of individuals that believed in him that would um, help him on his journey in terms of getting in shape and reclaiming his life and becoming the person he is today. So I'm excited to have seen the transformation and been a part of it. So we get into a little bit of it and it's a, it's a excellent talk. I'm happy to hear him and I'm so proud of what he was able to accomplish. Mr. Arash Safani. Dude, thanks for coming back to Power Athlete Radio. Thanks. Really appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me. I, I appreciate and uh, I appreciate your friendship, your mentorship. I'm grateful for every opportunity to to spend some time with you yeah well that's why uh, i hug you every single time well it, it's because i want to i want to exchange my gut microbiome well uh, the fact that i've been around you so much i'm interested to see to get your gut tested to see what i was able to give you they're like how did he get all the <sighs> the the biota for mayonnaise that's so crazy <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, talk some training, John. Let's do it. Um, just to tell you, uh, of anybody I've had on the podcast in recent years, you've gotten by far the best response. Everybody seems to enjoy you. I just think it's because they don't know you that well. And I, it's really crazy, but I never get a haircut before these things. <laughs> I'm always super messed up before I come in. So, huh, Well, I'll get that done. I'll, right. I'll fix it. Okay. All so. right. So uh, I'd really like to dive in on your transformation. Like you used to be heavy. I mean, you were big at one point, what, 360 something? Uh, 355. Okay. Faithful day, uh, January 1st, 2019. 355. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you used to be heavy and you went on this journey to losing weight. Mm -hmm. uh, can you describe a little bit about that journey and more importantly, like the difficulty and the change in mindset and what really was the catalyst that pushed you over? Because when I met you, 295, 300, you were kind of dipping around and then, you know, we went into our 12 week aggressive cycle, yeah. which really seemed to like catapult you. But you, uh, even though the, the macros and everything were laid out, you had to embrace it and really do it and be hungry and suffer through it. And I told you exactly what would happen and you hit it. So like it, it would have been easy just to be like, ah, fuck it. I ain't doing it. But what was the change in mindset? I think, uh, yeah, I remember because I took like a new year's trip with my girlfriend at the time to like a small town in California and we went and did, uh, where'd you uh, go? It was called Sonora, California. Yeah. And uh, they had a polar plunge for the new year. And I remember getting in the ice bath or in the lake. It was like a frozen lake. And I was able to stay in there longer than everybody. Well, no duh, because I was like 350 at the time. So I didn't actually didn't even feel cold at all. <laughs> and yeah. and uh, I just remember coming back because at that time I was like powerlifting and, uh, you know, mostly just bench press. But uh I remember having to go to the gym and I remember there was a scale there and I got on the scale and I was like, oh my God, I just hit like a weight PR, you know? And I just didn't see myself as being a guy that weighed 355, you know? Yeah. You, you just never think that that's what you're going to weigh. And uh, I'm not going to say I felt like a ton of uh, disgust, but it was kind of like a, a dude, uh, am I taking years off my life right now? It, it was a sense of urgency of I, I got to make a change. And so, um, uh, the mindset sh mindset shift uh, was was more of an audit. Like I, I started taking like a personal audit of all the things that I wanted to actually do, and I told myself, well, one, I don't want to be powerlifting forever. Sure. You know, this was just kind of like a bridge to keep me occupied uh, until I could go back to judo and uh, actually do martial arts. So I said, you know what, fun's over. You know, let's let's figure out a way to get there. But also too. Um, Am I actually hungry when I eat? Well, that was the second question. I was like, I don't remember being hungry for you? two years. Yeah. I was not hungry for two years and I ate anyway. 
Well, it's just because it becomes automatic. Yeah. Like you're like breakfast, lunch, dinner. And in your mind, you're thinking I got to get three to four meals. And mm-hmm. it's just kind of like one of those things where it gets dark. And next thing you know, you're like, oh, it's time for dinner. Yeah. So uh, so then that was my second question to myself. And the third question to myself was, um, what do you want to be able to do for the longest time possible? And I, I was like, dude, I, I can't I can't go a day without uh, working on or actively doing uh, martial arts. And because of that, uh, it just, it propelled me to want to change my lifestyle, but also my diet. So then I got a diet coach, um, actually Hani Rambod's wife. Uh, For Fire those of you guys that don't know that Hani Rambod coaches uh, Sebum and also Hadid. Yeah. So she had a, she has, she has a supplement store called uh, Nutrition Palace, very Persian name, mm-hmm. and it's all done up super Persian. Yeah. I, I love it there, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just followed the protocol there, yeah. and it, it helped me drop the first 30 pounds. Well, that's not true because the first 15 was my diet, which was uh, two pounds of pot roast a day and as many Brussels sprouts as I wanted to eat. Huh. So, uh, yeah, I, I did, like, inadvertently Atkins. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? This is not working out. My girlfriend's going to leave me because I'm a fart bomb. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Sounds about right. Yeah. And Story I, checks like, out. I needed professional help. Uh, so yeah, it, it wasn't that expensive either. It was about 300 bucks for like 12 weeks of professional help. And it wasn't stuff that I didn't already know, but I did need somebody to hold me accountable. So I think the mind shift, mindset shift was easy as soon as I figured out what exactly I wanted for my life. So it's a very, it's a brutally honest audit. It hurts, especially because you're looking at yourself and you wonder why I didn't do this sooner. But uh, uh, the pain is alleviated by the work. Do you feel that uh, you just kind of slip into it one day and like, you know, like you're looking in the mirror and you can't notice like a day to day change. And next thing you know, you step on the scale and you're 350 and you're like, where did this happen? Yeah, I feel like the comfort of the food <clears throat> and then the fact that I had a, a my first long term relationship with a girl, you know, so uh uh, I felt it was easy to to drift into that comfort zone of hey I'm being validated for my behavior you know she's not saying anything so why do I care and uh, you know I was still working out so to speak uh, but yeah I think the comfort was the comfort of knowing how I'm training for the day and eating and then knowing I have somebody nice waiting for me at home that was enough for me to just fall into that trap but yeah. I think the first thing that I noticed was uh, not getting pumps. So I wasn't able to get pumped up anymore. So I would, you, I could do like 20 bicep curls. I could do a really heavy weight that would make my muscles fail, but I couldn't feel a pump. Oh yeah. Why is that? Uh, I think it, I think it may have been the fat balance. So fat affecting the hormones and then. Yeah. You think your hormones were off? Yeah. I think the hormones were off at that point. Like I tipped the scale uh, somewhere in the hormonal balance, but that was a weird feeling. Like I would be, even on a heavy bench set, just not be able to feel my muscles. Wow. Yeah. It just felt like bone and sinew moving the bar, but muscles not actually getting pumped up. So you made the first jump, let's say from, let's say you were 355, you got down to 320 something. Yeah. And then you had kind of, and then you started working with, um, um, Honey Fire Roberts. Nos, Fire Nos Tavacol, yeah. Okay. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not butcher that name. Dr. Nas. All right. Dr. Nas. And she got you into what, uh, close to 300? Yeah. Ballpark. And then, uh, then, then I made the, then I was able to run that on autopilot a little bit. And then, uh, I started training judo again and then, um, and then I made the move to Austin and then that was the faithful, faithful change, you know, when I finally got to meet you and then I was like, Hey John, you know, like I, I did this whole thing, uh, but I feel like I need to pour gas on the fire and you're like, all right, dude. Uh, well, where do you want to go? And that was not the answer I expected. I expect you to be like, yeah, here you go, fat fuck. Like, take this and run it. But you were just like, where do you want to go? Yeah. And I thought that was such an important question because in my mind, I was just like, as far as we can. But you were like, all right, texted me two photos. And you texted me a photo of like your le- absolute leanness. And you're like, okay, this is me. It's seven and a half percent. Yeah, so, yeah seven, seven and change. Yeah, you're like, hey, this is me, seven and change, body fat percentage. And there wasn't a day or an hour that went by that I didn't think about tacos. Yeah. And and then you're like, here's me at 12% body fat. I was a much happier man. And I was like, okay, I'm leaning more to the picture on the on the right. So Well, well I, I think people always have this idea of like, hey, you know what? I'm sub 10% body fat. But there's a lot of work that goes into it. Sure. And then also the counterbalance for performance. 
Um, you know, you want to be able to do, do jujitsu, you want to train, you want to be able to be pretty active. Uh, the leaner I got, the less useful I was. Mm-hmm. Like I wasn't able to train as much. I just, I felt really tired, cold and hungry all the time. And like, it's really hard to motivate yourself to get up and bust ass and train when you're like, God, I'm so fucking hungry. We interrupt this episode with a shameless self-promotion. Are you pushing through performance roadblocks caused by pain or janky movement mechanics? Knock the rust off with our movement health courses used by thousands of athletes worldwide from average shows to MVPs. Our courses give you the tools to assess and fix yourself so you can get back to break in necks and cash in checks. Not convinced? Get a taste of how our courses can help you by enrolling in a free sample today. Head to powerathletehq.com and search courses from the menu. Now back to the show. That was the funny thing is like when, when I started the first phase of the diet protocol that you sent me, I, I kept telling you, I was like, dude, I feel cold. <laughs> I feel cold in Texas. Like yeah. I would wake up fingers and, and toes cold. I was like, is it because I'm so low carb on this day or X day or whatever? And you're like, uh, yeah, I think that's just part of the process, buddy. And then at the, at the same time, we were doing the hardest training possible. Yeah. Um, it was hot. It was hot. We're, uh, you know, uh, conditioning lifting and then in the morning i was training with the savages philippe and victor so i was getting beat up there beat up in the weight room and then getting beat up in the kitchen like having to weigh out my rice it's so depressing how much six ounces of rice actually is yeah have you ever tried to look at what a tablespoon of peanut butter is it's not even worth it like having peanut butter in the house i don't even buy peanut butter no because i already know yeah because a a tablespoon of peanut butter is worthless Uh, like like nobody wants this peanut butter and nutella absolute jihad against your diet (laughs) (laughs) there was uh there was a funny joke that if you want to destroy your diet make sure you have a bunch of like almonds and nuts and nut butters in your house yeah because what will happen is you'll take a handful and you're like oh that seems like a ounce or two and next thing you know 40 ounces later you're like oh where did i get these extra three thousand calories yeah and the oils i always tell people that too is um you know, because when I, I, I started finally uh, making a ton of progress, you know, people were, were asking me, hey, what's the magic? What, what did you do? And I was like, probably one of the most difficult things was to realize how much fat was in my food. So like, uh, you know, ha- uh, like a tablespoon of olive oil is like the size of a thumb, like the end of your thumb. And that's like 160 calories. Yeah. So people are just wanton spreading that around their pan not realizing that they're taking in an extra 450 calories and yeah, duh, like that's, uh, that will make a huge dent in the deficit you're trying to, trying to create. So, um, I think that was a hard thing, but like going back to the first thing is like really auditing all the things that you do and whether it's in your best interest to do them. So what I've found for dieting, <laughs> you need a start date and a finish date mm-hmm. Like the program I gave you was 12 weeks. I knew that we can run it for 12 weeks, a week longer, and it doesn't work. Mm. Uh, you can keep that mindset for about 12 weeks, and then you need like a taper and an ability to kind of come off. And you can kind of run some variations of it again. But if you don't really hit that 12 weeks, I don't know if it ever is going to work the same way. And I told yeah. you, you got one chance. But I also psychologically set it up that way. I'm like, this was only going to work once. You got 12 <laughs> weeks to hit it. All you got to do. And it plays into the psychology so well when you hit it 100% and crushed it out. And I couldn't have been more proud of what you came out because not only were you doing the training, because when I met you, you were a blue belt. Yeah. And so I've known you through all your purple belt and then you recently got a brown belt, which is a big deal. So power athlete uh, lineage. Yeah. But it, it, I mean, I, I remember one of the first times we trained together, I, I went to class at Shanji's and you showed up and totally sat on me for, <laughs> you know, 30 minutes. and North, south. Oh, belt. my God. I, I couldn't get out from underneath you. It was awful. And, uh. But that change in mindset, I mean, you had to kind of do it the old fashioned way, which is you just had to suffer through it. And there had to be kind of an end goal. Whereas now with the GLP ones, Mm -hmm. you see a lot of people losing weight that aren't having to mentally suffer, but it is doing behavior modification. Uh, Have you met people that have lost weight, you know, using the GLP ones? My brother. This episode of Power Athlete Radio is powered by Train Heroic, the most immersive strength training app experience on the market. We've built an online training business by partnering with Train Heroic to deliver all of our world-class training programs like Jack Street, Hammer, Field Strong, and Grindstone. To learn which Power Athlete training program best suits your goals, head to powerathletehq.com slash training. And if you're a coach looking to build a business with the best training tech in the business, head to trainheroic.com slash powerathletehq. And now back to the show. My brother... um 
you know, he struggled during the pandemic. I think he fell into the trap that a lot of uh, people fell into, which is like, where do we go now? What is my work going to look like? And uh, I think that led to a lot of excessive calories just from, you know, uh, uh, a population standpoint. Right. Uh, and I think I don't want to disparage people for using that as a momentum because I know that at every benchmark I I surpass during the, you know, quote unquote transformation is that every time I, I reach that benchmark, I gained a little bit more momentum and I, I had more faith in my process. Yeah. So if that's going to get them to the first benchmark, amazing, because, every you know, it's just going to push you to go further and further and further. And now he seems like to be having a great time. I think he's lost over 40 pounds wow. and uh, he doesn't even have the same lifestyle as me. No. So he does like to be active, but I would say it, 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 he's more on the general population training protocol where it's two to three times a week, uh, you know, random Pilates class, you know, sure. LA lifestyle, sure, hanging out. For you, the fact that you had something to train for and felt that there was like a you know, physique and kind of a composition change of your body, mm -hmm. which made you more useful in terms of jujitsu. Was that a part of a motivating factor that there was something to get in shape for? There was something bigger than what you were just looking in the mirror? Man, uh, you and I have a similar struggle, the, the knee flexion, right? So I was just like, man, if I can just lose a little bit and uh, get a little bit of uh, uh, stress off of my knee, uh, I'll be able to get into that position better, or like a knee cut or something like that, yeah. a bane of my existence. Cause I just mm -hmm. bending the knee right now is just not in the cards. And so I just said, you know, what? I'll be able to move around better. And who knows, like I might actually be good at this. And uh, sure enough, yeah, I was doing things that I couldn't do before just from being able to drop your a flexibility of over the course of like the two years we trained went from like decent to incredible. Like, I remember there was one point we were rolling recently. I remember I went to staple your leg and I had your one leg and I literally went to like trying to split you to kind yeah. of knee cut. And like, it literally went right to the ground and was stuck. And I was like, oh shit, like normally I can feel tension and somebody, and it'll kind of move, make a move or they get a little stressed. Yeah. You know, that's uh that's a good sign because I know people go to get me in those positions. And when you're super flexible, especially as a big guy and people don't expect it, it's yeah. always kind of a good card to play. Yeah. But the funny thing is I was running into my own gut before because I had, I had a gut. So then I would be flexible enough to get into that position, but then the pressure on my own gut mm. didn't allow me to withstand, uh, you know, the pressure being put on me. So the rotation improved. Rotation improved, uh, flexibility improved. I would say hip flexor strength was a big part of it. So that probably alleviated a lot of the knee strain. And we know from the dead bugs is the hip flexors are usually the first things to shake, yeah. you know, uh, in all populations. And so being able to get the hip flexor strong enough so I can actively pull my knee to my chest and, and retain a guard, that was huge too. So not only was I confident in how flexible I was, but also how act, uh, how much active range of motion I had. So uh, a lot of benefit there, but going back to the GLP ones, it's, uh, I don't think it's cool to bash people for, for uh, hey, starting off their journey. Everybody's on their own journey. How you get on that path, as long as you get on that path. Yeah. Because I, I, Mike, I have to admit, before I had Doc Parsley on the podcast where we talked about the GLP ones, I kind of bought into a little bit of it. I'm like, ah, it's just cheating. How come people don't have the same yeah. programming? Why can't they do it themselves? Now they're going to need this pharmaceutical assistance. And after sitting with Parsley and they talked about the behavior modification and what it does for, you know, for glucagon and um, really, behave, you know, like remodeling the brain uh, and, you know, pain sensors and, uh, you know, going in for, uh, reward sensors. I mean, it just was fascinating to the point where I was like, man, this actually feels like a pretty good thing, especially for people that have constantly hit the wall where they can't lose weight. Now they have something that's helping them get over the hump and at least get them started. Yeah. Because it, you're taking somebody from, uh, <clears throat> you know, traditionally we don't view it as a, as a, a, a sickness like a, but they are in like a in, a, in an ill state at the moment. And so if you can get them out of that pain, to getting them moving. And then now you got to carry it on a stick. Now you have them. Uh, oh yeah. I, I got it. I got a little bite of the carrot. You know, I lost 15 pounds. Great. All right, let's keep going. Now what else can I do? So now they are more curious. It's kind of like when you start out of, at a job, you know, they give you small tasks and then you're rewarded for those tasks and then you keep moving up and then you take on more and more responsibility, but then you also take more interest in your job and you're wondering ways that you can improve it. And I think that's, uh, 
in small part how uh, most people think about weight loss is they, they start thinking about, all right, what vitamins am I taking? Because I know I'm dieting heavy. So what should I take for a vitamin? How should I be sleeping? Oh, if I sleep eight hours a night, I lose more fat. So if I if I sleep less, I get hungry in the morning. Oh, that's why that works. Because, uh, you know, days that you don't get a lot of sleep, the next day you're going to want to eat all the chocolate in the world. Have you noticed uh, the way people treat you is different? Yes, I have a hotter girlfriend now. But I mean, uh, like, <laughs> that's always a good one. <laughs> Kudos to you. Uh, but think about this. Um, like, let's say you run into somebody you haven't seen in a while. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, all of a sudden they're making a big deal. Like, oh my God. And you're like thinking to yourself, it was like, did I look that bad before that you're making this big a deal about it now? I think, I think you get, uh, I do think you get disregarded for sure as like incapable, lazy, so lazy, uh, not included because, uh, you know, even though I was in, in martial arts my whole life, they became a point where, you know, I'd gotten so large that I was, you know, if my buddies were like, Hey, we're going to do a hike at Runyon, you know, I just wasn't in the group chat. He's not making it up there. Can you, I, I just, I, I couldn't bring it in my brain. Cause even before that, I had done a ton of hard training and high school wrestling, and a little bit of college and even in judo. Right. So to view myself as somebody that couldn't participate, I think that was the main thing. Most people were just like, yeah, that, that he's not for that right now. So we're not going to include him. So that was, that was a hard thing to, so now, now it seems like, oh yeah, we, you know, Arash, we're going to go do uh, Pilates on whenever I'm, I'm not like super open to, uh, taking up my mornings like that. I, you know, but I if train. somebody asks you to do, somebody Pilates. Asks me to do it, I'm going to do it. Like yeah. I feel up to it. Oh, we're going to play a pickup game. Yeah. I'm up to it. Yeah. You know, before it was like, I'm too in pain. I'm, I just can't move fast enough. I'm, I'm, I'm incapable. So I think, yeah, people view you in a different, a different light, but I think it's mostly just the inclusion, you know? And, you know, uh, lifestyle choices too, right? Uh, people are judgmental, whether we like to believe it or not. Um, you want to assume everybody's for the good, but uh, they do look at you first, first impression and view in a different light. Um, Does it make you uh, a little more kind and a little more engaging if you meet people that are heavy? Empathetic for sure. Yeah. Um, because I was there, right? So, yeah, I know the, I know the path and, uh, I took the harder route. I mean, obviously, if, if I look back, I'm like, I don't regret it. But also, man, that was a lot of mileage. So, yeah, but uh, I think when you came out of the flame, um, the person that I first met is not the same person a year later, six months later. Like when you came through that flame, like uh, the bravado and pre increased. I mean, like the, just everything about you kind of magnified up. And yeah. what's, what's kind of funny is as a as a big dude, you got to kind of learn to have a sense of humor. Yeah. You got a little self-deprecating and this, yeah. you, like, you got to be at least. Fat kid syndrome. Like yeah. when you grow up fat, you know, that's like. You got to be funny you because, be funny. Uh, because you can't be an asshole and be fat, but nobody's going to want to hang out with you. Yeah. So you develop your personality and your sense of humor and you understand how to like interpersonal relationships. Yeah. And um, then all of a sudden, you know, you get in good shape and people are like, man, you got a great personality. And you're like, yeah, because I had to work on it for a long time. Yeah. Cause yeah. Cause uh, otherwise you couldn't play. Right. It's like. Uh, I forgot the original question. But uh, um, I asked you about the change in the mindset in terms of losing that weight and going through it. And more importantly, like, what, what do you think that uh, that process has taught you? Mm. Uh, perseverance. Yeah, I think I think uh, persevering through tasks I, I didn't think were important before. But um, for instance, the zone two, I think that was huge. Just having the discipline to get up and do my 20 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever it was on the day. Yeah. Um, be honest with myself when I'm weighing out my food for the first time. That's a tough one because you're just like, ah, 7.6 is the same as seven ounces or whatever. So I do that all the time. So that was a skill. I think, uh, just in general, just knowing that I could, I could learn how to be a different version of me. I think that was the, that was a big one because, uh, you've talked about it before about crystallization, like the, the mm -hmm. men crystallize around their thirties and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, late they, 20s or 30s. they don't think that they can change into a different person that they're pigeonholed into whatever it is that they built themselves up to be. And I think that was the biggest thing that I taught me. I was like, all right, dude, I just freaking, I pulled a Jared from subway, you know, in terms of weight loss. 
And uh, like, what else is next? Like I can learn anything. What about having people around you? Like, you know, you were, uh, you know, training with, you know, Sean G and Victor and Philippe and the guys and, you know, coming here, like you had community, you had somebody to lean on and you had people that were around you that believed in you. I feel that's a powerful uh, catalyst for it. And like, almost like you don't want to let people down and they're kind of not judging you, but they're monitoring your progress and they're in the ride with you. Surely. I think community was huge. Uh, I, I had like a really, really big reservoir of self-hatred though. So that like, I could have, I could have done it alone, uh, personally, but I don't think that's no way to celebrate any kind of, uh, commitment to anything. You know, it feels much better when people are around. Well, everybody so, was rooting for you. I know Sean yeah, G yeah, was yeah. talking about it. And I mean, Victor and Philippe and everybody like, oh, I can't wait for Rush to get in shape. He's yeah. going to be such a, uh, he's going to be a better training partner for yeah. us. Yeah. So like in their own selfish way, they were like <laughs> propping you up. They're yeah. like, oh, when he gets in good shape, we're going to be able to beat him up more. So we'll make better training. Oh, shit. And uh, that always made me laugh. And I was like, so wait a minute, you want him to get like, do you want him to get in shape for his health and for him? And they're what? like, no, 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 he's going to be easier to triangle when he's little. So Philippe told me. Yeah. The- it, it did get easier, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the community piece is huge. I I think uh, I think uh, no endeavor is uh, worth doing solo, in my opinion. Like you want to you want to either help people get to their goals, or you want people to be a part of your goals. So uh, you can achieve a ton of different stuff solo, but if you've got nobody to raise a glass next to you when it's all over, you know uh, what was that song? The, the Fast and the Furious song, uh, Danza Coduro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that song comes on, you got to be with your boys. Yeah. And then you're like, yeah, 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 we just get down on the heist. Yeah, there you go. So it, it always feels better with other people around you. So yeah, the community piece is huge. But, you know, I, I, I don't think that you necessarily need to uh, uh, start. You'd be like, oh, I got to find a really big team to be a part of yeah. first. No, there's a lot of stuff that you can do yeah. on your own first. Yeah. And then uh, when you feel juiced up, about it the the process then you got to go find find the gym that speaks to you or the community that speaks to you for instance like the power athlete community is, yeah. is really dope i remember just like being in the proximity of power athlete made me privy to like all these cool people that train jujitsu all over the country that are just like checking in on my journey and i'm like oh nice like i got i got people behind me you know yeah. and I, i'm for them too so I, I always go back to the Joey Diaz one where he's like, you don't need a lot of motherfuckers. You just need two or three good motherfuckers and you can take over a country. <laughs> and I'll get Jacob to cut in that exact clip right here. Oh, but shit. that Joey Diaz one, he's like, you don't need a lot of motherfuckers. You just need two or three motherfuckers. Yeah. Joey Diaz, absolute comedy legend, legend a legend. guy. And uh, still probably one of the funnier dudes I've ever heard. Yeah. I mean, dude, there, there's a story with, uh, I think it was Brett Kreischek calls him and he's like, ah, uh, um, uh, Tom Segura, I guess, like slipped him some drugs. Yeah, yeah. And he no, called, that was uh, Ari Shafir. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ari so Shafir slipped some ecstasy at his own house. Yeah, so he calls jo- uh, Joey and he comes over there and he's like, lock the door. We're going to see the devil's dick. And he like goes out there and he's like, give it to me. And he takes it. He's like, we're all going to die. Nobody's dying on my watch. <laughs> he wrote it with him. Yeah. He wrote it with him. Dude, he's, a, he's the ultimate ride or die. Yeah. Well, dude, uh, that's great. Asked and answered. So yeah. thanks for tuning in. Another episode of Power Athlete Radio. Hey there, Power Athlete Nation. Big shout out to all the heavy hitters who stuck around till the final whistle. If you've been soaking in the knowledge bombs and epic tales you've been dropping for free, here's your chance to be a game changer. Swing by klfi.com slash power athlete and toss a few bucks our way to keep the podcast fueled and firing on all cylinders. That's ko-fi.com forward slash power athlete. Your support makes a difference. See ya.